So welcome. So today I'm, I'm doing a candid talk to Kikuyus and even Luos, but mostly Kikuyus. So the topic today is that my fellow Kenyans who are Kikuyus, Luos are not and have never been your enemies. But your enemies are your local politicians who pit Luos against Kikuyus. Mm-hmm. who bring about hatred so, so they can maintain their power. So during the fight for, I want to go back historically, during the fight for independence, of course, Gemma played most of the part. And for when I read the Jaramogi's book, Not Yet Uhuru, it shows how other tribes were contributing even money. So Jaramogi even used to meet people like Dedan De- 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 Kimathi, were the freedom fighters and organizers those times so by the, by then it was the, not making their plans so you, you can go and read not yet to Huru by jaramogi to see how even though gamer was playing the most prominent part in mau mau but there are other tribes also who are contributing apart from money even other resources too so it was not tribal affair like politicians like to Claim, like regard is like saying that it was is a son of Mau Mau. Hmm? It is true, but you need to realize that it was not a tribal affair. Other tribes too contributed things like money. Now, colonialists are also try to portray it like it was Gema, and then colonialists they they try to demonize Gema so much. Hmm? Gema was demonized so much. And then they tried also to, to pit communities against each other. Uh, so communities tried to bring about civil war between mostly Kikus and Luos. Like the mother of Jericho of Hafa, who was a councillor in Nairobi, it was supposed to make it look like he was killed by Kikuyu. And then Wazungus were trying to make Luos to get arms and, re- and retaliate. So Jaramogi had wisdom. He came and brought about dialogue and told the Luos who were angry to instead build a memorial in honor of Jericho Fafa. So now, now we have nowadays Jericho Fafa Memorial Hall. Then at independence also there was no tribalism. Kenyatta got votes all over the country. Even Kadu who were the opposition, they were not tribal. So it was now ideological, not tribal. So again, Wazungus again, they again try to instigate enmity among tribes. So all these divisions you are seeing, Ati Jaramogi was on the east, communist, Kenyatta was, I don't know, capitalist. These were all propounded more by the, West, the foreigners. Hmm? But these guys were united. The country was united. Tom Boya was an MP in Nairobi. Most of his brothers were Kuyus, in fact. Hmm? So even though they were divided ideology, ideologically, but you find that on Jaramogi's side we had guys like Bildad Kagia, Munyo Wayeki. Hmm? On Kenyatta's side we had guys like Tom Boyer, who is a Luo, hmm? and others. So there was no tribalism, it was just ideological differences which had got no tribal face. So things like land distribution, which was an issue later. People who oppose Kenyatta, some were Kikuyus, some were Luos. Hmm? Peter Kagia, Munyo Waiyaki, they opposed the land distribution. Even guys like JM Karioki. Hmm? And then we even had some Luos who opposed Jaramogi. That's how democracy works. So there was no tribalism. But now, after the murder of Tom Boyer, it's when now tribalism began to take a new face. And even things like Othing, by Kikuyus mostly, was now being done to, to propound this tribalism factor. To make it look like now it is only Luos who are opposing Jomo Kenyatta. Which is not true. So Othing made it worse. There's a book by Reverend John Gatu, who was a PCA leader. He wrote about this Othing, how it began after Nboya's death, and how he warned Jomo Kenyatta about Othing. He went to State House and he warned Jomo Kenyatta and those leaders. 
So from them, from then on, you see now they kind of began to split, and even now Luos began to began to, to get demonized so much that they are useless, they're mature, they can't lead, hmm? and politicians are all, all, all at the forefront to propagate this division. But that was, before, that was not the case. If, if it was ideological differences, it was based on ideology, not tribalism. But after the Madam Boya, it's when it began to get more tribal. And of course, Lewis began to become more isolated from political mainstream. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were began to be seen as more of a position. So my but you find that it's not only Luos who are opposing the government. Mm-hmm. We had even Kikuyu's also like JM Karaoke who are opposing the government and everybody knows what happened to them. Mm-hmm. So it is now some politicians who took this over. They began to play around these communities so they can maintain power. In 202, I think in our lifetime, it's, it's 202 is when we saw Kikuyu's and Luos coming together when Quebec was elected. It was, it was a a beautiful moment to even see Lela going to central, being received as Jamba, which means warrior. But now politicians in central who were selfish began to use. I think they became intimidated, and they began to sow those divisions which were there during the Mboya time to divide Luos and Kikuyus again. So we had selfish politicians. Who brought about that division and the NAC split? The NAC party split, and now 207, everybody knows what happened. Hmm? So, in 202, things were, things were rosy, but now things they, be, they, they brought divisions again, and then 207, Kenya almost broke apart. Kenya almost split apart, and there was almost a civil war. 2013. Guru Kenyatta came to power using that division. He sold that division. Hmm? And 2017, there was even a talk of some Kikuyus also. They were again revisiting that oath. So as we are talking today, we are just like the way Kenya was after Mboya died. Hmm? Again, Kikuyus are being told that Luos are the enemies. Luos are being told that Kikuyus are not to be trusted. Hmm? They are over privileged, over entitled, etc. These are all narratives used by politicians to divide communities. Why do they do this? They do this to create, to create divide, divide and rule. And divide and rule ensure that they remain in power. They remain in power locally. And even their foreign masters too are able to come and exploit the country at will. Hmm? Because Wazungus only come when the country is divided. So our local politicians use this, this divide and rule mostly during election time. Because other times, we are always united. You go to school, your classmate is a Kikuyu or a Luo, you go to hospital, you are sick, you don't care who, you, you don't care who your doctor is. But now at election, it's when this spirit comes of division. Why is that? Because politicians use it at that time to help themselves come to power. So we find that even 2022, these politicians, they were very angry when, for example, Uru Kenyatta supported Raila. Hmm? And they're forgetting that before Raila supported Kibaki. Nobody protested. Hmm? But now when Uru supports Raila, it's like the world is ending. Hmm? So they're not telling their people that you can't elect a Luo, I don't know what. Hmm? So you find that this narrative, they're now bringing it. Why? To help themselves go to power. And now during these protests, they're trying to bring this narrative again to divide the protests. Because if it's about stolen election, hmm? all Kenyans deserve to know the truth. Because truth about election will affect even, it will build integrity of the IBC even the future elections in the whole Kenya, not just Luos. And if it's about the price of commodities, 
Al food cheap in central. Al food more more affordable. Is food more cheap in Kiambu and Nyeri? Yeah? So if it is protests, they should not make it tribal. Hmm? But now they're doing this to divert attention and they try to make it look like a Lu affair, hmm? which is not the case. So they always bring this to bring about division and to, to isolate their tribe. They isolate the Kikuyus. So by doing that, other Kenyans will make it look like Kikuyus are privileged, which is not the case. It's not true. So it's just a political narrative used by these politicians to make themselves remain in power. So my message is, Kikuyus and even to Luos, wake up. Don't be divided and lied to by these politicians. Hmm? The issue of land should be resolved as per the Ndungu Land Commission report and even the TGRC report. Kimani Chungwa is a majority leader. He can propose that motion in parliament whereby all the land grabbers in both Kenya Kwanza, the previous governments, also all of them, they can account. That's the way to do it. But by, by this innovation of land, is not the way to do it. It's a diversion. And this tribal narrative also is a way of them remaining in power. We should wake up. It's high time Kenyans grow up. We should not be controlled like children by these politicians. Hmm? Kenyans should wake up and know that things are not the way they are being told. Hmm? Luos are not the enemies of Kikuyus. Luos have never taken anybody's land in this country. Kikuyus are not any enemies of Luos. They are not. Hmm? That's the truth. That's my point today. Let politicians not divide the country and organs like NCIC should act on these politicians who bring about such kind of ethnic narratives. So that's my point for today. And I know this may annoy some people, but I don't, I don't care because truth has to be said. Our country has to speak about these truths and tribalism has to end. And I hope that one day, like Martin Luther once said, that he'll grow in a country where people will be judged by the content of their character, not color of their, color of their skin. For me as a Kenyan, I hope that one day I'll grow in a country and my kids will grow in a country where we'll be judged, not by our tribes, by, but by the content of our character. Mm. That's all for today. So I'd like to see your comments in the comment section. And Mungu Aibariki, Kenya. Thank you.